Okay guys, thanks for watching. This is uh, basically going to be the first part in a fairly long running series looking at the laser cutter, um, the build for that. Uh, so it's basically going to be the build log for the laser cutter and eventually it's going to be uh, more of a build log for the workshop because there's actually quite a lot of little projects that are going to go into one big project which is basically the workshop. Um, one thing I was thinking of while I was just doing the 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 unboxing there was uh, a bit more like the motivation behind use, uh, this sort of setup. What I'm interested in doing is setting up a, a small um, a small workshop that would basically allow me or anyone else in the family, if uh, if we need to build something, there's all the tools there to build it. Um, I personally am much better at designing stuff on a computer than I am at uh, doing hand tools, and uh, I do really enjoy the building of the CNC machines and all those sort of projects, so that is going to be great. Um, a lot of the little projects that I've uh, that I've had down the years have used laser cut parts. Um, part of uh, me doing this year is that I'm no longer full. Uh, I'm no longer employed by the university, um, which basically means I don't have access to their cool labs and all the laser cutters and stuff there, which is a, a, a real shame. So the reason we're starting with a laser cutter in the whole workshop automation side of things is there's loads of little projects that or ideas for projects that keep coming up and I think, yeah, I could laser cut that. And obviously I don't, uh, when I was working for the university, I didn't want to like kind of outstay my welcome as it were by constantly using their laser cutter. So all of the projects for that I kept at a, a minimum. And a lot of the time I was thinking, oh, you know, I could make this or I could make that. It's fun. It's going to be fun to make it. And so I'm kind of being a little bit selfish on this in that it's, uh, it's basically a toy for me, which is hopefully going to pay for itself. So, because we have the uh, the the kind of the products and stuff planned out for the uh, for the weddings and the venues, um, hopefully I can get this to pay for itself. At the moment, it's looking pretty uh, pretty good. So I've got it set up like the gantry set up on the floor over here, as you saw. Okay, so this is basically what the uh, the shape of the thing is going to look like. We've got the 1.5 meter lengths here, and the one meter lengths going crossways. This is going to be the x-axis and this is going to be the y-axis. You can see these two black bits here, those are going to have rollers on them so that this whole middle bar can slide up and down. And then this bit here will also have rollers and be able to slide up and down that way. And what's going to happen is the laser gets mounted there. Okay, so in the UK, uh, sheet material um, usually comes in a standardised size of uh, a large size which is 1200 by uh, 2400 millimetres which is about 4 by 8 feet or a 4 by 2 foot version uh, which is um, 120 millimeters by 600 millimeters which will fit nicely inside here. The honeycomb when expanded is actually going to be big enough to, to fit just inside here and that's actually about the size of the material we want to cut and then that leaves a bit of gap around the edges and what that's going to form is at this end there's going to be like a covered over section this is going to be open in a workshop. We're going to have like a covered over docking section where everything will go back in to keep the optics clean. Uh, and that gives us enough room from this side onwards to have the cutting area. And then it gives us enough room at the top and bottom to have multiple tools attached to this. And uh, we, we have been talking in the future about maybe fitting like a plasma cutting torch or something to it as well. But that would require a, a Z-axis. So I'm not really thinking too hard about that right now. I just want to get it working as a laser. As it sits on the, uh, the workbench that it's going to be built onto, the laser is actually going to go in a, in a compartment here, and then there's going to be beside it the electronics and the power supplies. And then at the front here we're going to have a small uh, LCD screen and control system so that you can manually move it around. Uh, one of the things the Arduino Mega gives us is the ability to uh, use uh, an SD card and uh, an Ethernet connection. So what I'm hoping to do is control this over uh, the internet and also be able to load programs onto an SD card and plug them in and just cut me that please and it will go. So what is a laser cutter? Uh, a laser cutter basically uses um, light to cut material. Um, what the, the type of laser we're going to be using is uh, a 40 or a 60 watt CO2 laser. This uses the, the gas carbon dioxide. Uh, it passes electricity through it. 
which uh, causes it to emit heat. Um, and that heat is then bounced off mirrors, and goes down to the material and cuts through the material. So the heating up of the material, which basically vaporizes stuff away from the surface, comes from the laser. Uh, and then to remove that, which is similar to like the, the flutes on a drill, removing swarf from, uh, from the drill cut or from a, a, an end mill cut, um, is handled by compressed air. So compressed air gets blown down the laser into the cut and blows all of the, the vaporized material out of the way. So we're going to be able to cut things uh, like sheet wood, um, particularly most of my project work is going to be uh, plywood or MDF. Uh, we're going to be able to cut things like acrylic, like plastics. We're going to be able to cut foams, and we're probably going to be able to cut quite thick foams. Um, that does come with a like the caveat that a lot of plastics, when vaporised, form quite toxic chemicals. So probably what we're going to do is one of the first early projects for this is building a, a, a vacuum enclosure for it which will basically extract any gases and throw them outside. Uh, and probably what we'll do is get like a couple of HEPA filters or something on that to try and minimise the amount of crap coming out of the workshop. So the components that make up the laser cutter are uh, an XY gantry, and this is basically uh, uh, rollers and motors that allow it to move the cutting head backwards and forwards. So we've used Open Build for this. The, they basically offer like open source uh, machine building aluminium extrusion uh, for basically for building gantries and for building milling machines and whatever you want basically. Their, uh, I think their tagline on the box is what do you want or what, what will you build with it? And to be honest since ordering it we've actually ordered more because we keep thinking of things to build with it. Uh, one of the other things we're going to make with the open rail is um, uh, a camera panning and a camera tracking gantry for like uh, the digital SLRs. And I'm quite interested, I've got a couple of spare stepper motors and stepper drivers, so I'm quite interested in making that into like an automated thing. The gantry is moved by stepper motors, and these are, um, these are basically electric motors that can turn in very accurate uh, amounts. And the way that works is you send electrical pulses to it, and for every pulse it gets, it clicks round one tiny bit. Um, and so then the, mo the rotation of the motors is translated to the the rollers that move the gantry up and down uh, with belts and they're timing belts so they're, they're going to be quite accurate. The the stepper motors are controlled by uh, an electronics kit which uh, I bought from a company in Germany and they offered the, the power supply for the motors, the motors themselves which are huge and there's four of them so there's two more than I actually need for this project so I've got two spare stepper motors. And they also offered the, uh, the the control electronics for it, so that gives us the power, uh, the ability to move the motors. That's designed to be plugged into a computer via the parallel port. Now I've got a lot of trouble with my CNC mill at the moment in that I don't really have a, a computer with a parallel port that's able to deal with that. So what I'm going to be doing is I've got uh, two Arduino Megas on order. These are small control boards, and uh, I'm going to use the uh, the software that runs on the 3D printer. I'm going to install that on the boards and use that to run the same, um, uh, run the mill and the uh, and the laser cutter. Because actually, at the end of the day, the 3D printer, the mill, and the laser cutter are all XY gantries. So that's going to get me um, the mill milling machine working, which we do need to build some of the parts for the laser cutter. So I've got a big. <laughs> I've got a big flow chart of all the bits I need to, to get working, to, to get the whole workshop up and running. And a lot of this is going to be bootstrapping, so I'm going to machine some pieces on the mill uh, really quickly and roughly. Uh, I'm then going to probably come back and laser cut those later on. Um, it'll probably go through a couple of steps, I don't know. Uh, there's a few pieces for the lathe which I don't have, which I'll probably need to machine or laser cut. So there's loads of, loads of work to to do and it's probably going to come together gradually over time. Something I did quickly touch on in the in the unpacking uh, is future plans for this. Uh, we got the XY gantry, we did talk about whether we should make a second one and have a plasma cutter or whether we should have a plasma cutting table built into this one. Uh, now I've seriously overspecced the motors for this, uh, let's face it. Um, and that, that was mainly down to me just saying, oh, I'll just order the biggest ones I can find, which uh, is not probably the best planning in the world, but 
you know, it kind of uh, it worked out that I could get the bigger motors for the same price, so why not get the bigger motors? So I've got like powerhouse motors for this thing. So probably uh, an early on project is going to be fitting a X axis, uh, sorry, a Z axis, so we can move the head up and down, which is definitely required for plasma cutting, um, and is technically required for laser cutting. Although we're going to do that manually because for the for the early jobs we're only going to be cutting sheet material. So yeah, there's plasma cutting attachment. That's probably a future project, um, and that's that's like on a definite project list rather than a maybe we should do it list. Uh, on the maybe we should do it list is uh, we've seen a lot of really cool things like object art that sort of stuff that is made out of laser cut tubes. So basically, you know, you have a tube of material, whether it's wood or plastic or whatever. Uh, we had sort of some really cool stuff with um, uh, birch bark. So they've basically taken like a tube of birch bark and then cut stuff out of it. Um, I reckon we can, I can make some really really cool stuff with that. So one of the things I've been thinking of making, and this will be made out of laser cut parts and use one of the spare motors, is uh, a W axis which will allow rotation so we can have that set up. Basically just it clicks into the, the laser cutter gantry. So you've got the X, the, the Y X axis, and then you've got a rotation axis which will have a chuck on each end and hold big round objects. Uh, and we do some really cool stuff with that. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking like, it's a little bit ridiculously lazy but, you know, if I ever wanted to make some Larry Hall um, uh, rain gutted roses and buckets with all those holes cut out, you know, would I do it all in the whole sort? Or would I write a computer program to do it for me in the laser cutter? Now, I'm one of those people that would write a program to do it for me. Because, yeah, let's face it, I, I am fairly lazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I think that goes hand in hand with engineering and automation, is uh, if you can make it, if you can make something to do it for you, you'd do that. There was a great, uh, there's a comic called XKCD. Um, I'll see if I can find a link to it, but there's a, a great comic where they've got um, basically a, a graph saying like how how long it takes you to build something to automate a task versus how much time you saved by just doing the task. Uh, and it's quite funny because that way you can like basically track on the graph how far you should go before you give up because it would just be easier to do it by hand. Um, <laughs> I'm wandering off on a tangent. Anyway, yes, automating Larry Hall grow buckets. The building thereof. Maybe that will be a funny project. I, I, it's probably not very accessible to anyone that doesn't have a, a, a laser cutter, I guess. Anyway, so I've kind of forgotten what I was talking about. I went off on a, <laughs> I've got off on a tangent. Um, so the time frame for this, as I said in the beginning of the video, is we're going to get this, uh, we're aiming to get this done by May. Uh, so first cutting at the beginning of May, hopefully, if I can get all of the parts. The laser is a big unknown at the moment. Uh, I've been waiting for Chinese New Year to be done with. Um, that's now over as far as I know, so I'm going to uh, email the company again and see if I can get uh, get get in contact with them. Uh, the company comes from, via recommendation from another builder who uh, has been uh, helping me out with the, the build. This is uh, Damien Axford. I'll leave a link to his um, YouTube channel in the description. He has uh, previously built one using pretty much exactly the same setup. And uh, it looks great. It works great. And he has been a massive help in, uh, in, in basically going through the design and helping me out get, getting all the, the plans and stuff right in my head. So yeah, I, I'm I'm really grateful for for Damien for taking his time to to answer all my questions and stuff. Um, and if you go and have a look at his project, you can kind of see what the end result is going to be like. Um, so first cutting in May, laser cutter needs to be ordered. The optics need to be ordered. Although I'm trying to get those bundled together into one thing. Um, the workshop needs clearing out, so uh, I've got a couple of bolt bags. We're going to start just throwing stuff out into those, uh, probably in the next couple of days. Um, that's going to involve quite a lot of me rearranging all my boxes, because basically my entire apartment uh, from the last couple of years is now boxed up in like big blue plastic totes and uh, stored in there, which were originally going to be aquaponics grow beds, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that. Going forward, there's those like the extra projects, like the plasma cutter and the the the, y uh, the, the W axis for this. Um, 
the one thing I do need to do in order to make some parts is um, get the, the micro mill or the, the desktop mill sorted out. Uh, that is also going to help me get all of the software for, for the, uh, the laser cutter done because basically I'm going to prototype the software for the laser cutter to use the mill. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to stop talking now before I carry on for the rest of the evening.